Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with When Will I Will Make His Move, episode number 9, Reaction. Alright, the previous episode. Um, okay, we got to see more of Rin and you know like her personality is an interesting one, you know. She, it looks as if she's like, you know, very respectful towards her senpais and everyone. And it is true, but to a certain extent, we saw like after she joins the club she gets in and she decides to challenge Ayumu and uh, obviously defeats him because she is accustomed to playing uh, Shogi and sh she's a lot better player than him and then completely drops all the honorifics and just starts calling him like you know with his name and which shows how she only you know like uses uh, honorifics like senpai or like you know, talks respectfully to someone who would be able to beat her in like a certain thing that's why uh, she called um, uh, calls Ayumu and um, uh, what's, what was that guy's name oh my god I forgot his name Takeru yeah uh, both of them by their uh, by senpai because they're better at her than in kendo so if she was someday she's able to defeat them in kendo she'll also <laughs> lose the honor fix then and there while referring to them in kendo situations so that's kind of interesting and yeah, she also challenged um, Urushi as well. Urushi at first was pretty concerned because, you know, <laughs> seeing something like that. But then with Aimu's encouragement, she easily defeated her. And uh, yeah, and she, like, you know, like, and we see, uh, <laughs> uh, we see Rin kind of becoming like her errand girl or something, saying like, oh, like, you know, order me whatever you want to. I'm your errand girl. And like, you know, like that. That was kind of funny. Another thing that kind of came out we got to know is that um, turns out uh, Rin also likes and this was something that came out of complete nowhere. I was not expecting this uh, because you know like Rin's personality I thought it was like you know like in no way did I even imagine she also likes Ayumu and she also has decided to you know like confess if she's able to defeat him. In Kento. So the reason why, like, usually, like, you know, whenever some characters like this kind of are introduced, they usually have like, a, like an affection towards the main character. But I didn't really think about that for Rin, because uh, Rin seemed a lot. Uh, what can I say? Serious, and she seemed too genuinely, like, you know, like, and she's so stoic and kind of like that that I wasn't able to even detect that. Interestingly, like, you know, like it's the same situation that Ayumu has. And Ayumu has decided for Urushi, you know, Ayumu is going to confuse, uh, confess if Urushi is able to defeat Urushi. So it's kind of similar to that and that kind of blew my mind completely. I, it came out of nowhere when, when the thing was written. I was like, damn, I was not expecting that. And okay, so that's the actual thing now. And he kind of goes and decides to help Ayumu out <laughs> in Shogi <laughs> so that he's able to do it. But it's nice, obviously, like she herself decides to has thought about confessing, uh, and she's actually helping him out at the same time. But anyways, um, uh, and after that, in the end, we get a little, uh, you know, like welcome party for Rin, and we see how Aimu and Ur uh, Urushi kind of talk about it, and how, like, you know, Urushi says like, "Oh, thank you so much for helping me out," and they had a little moment, and that was it. All right, let's see what happens today. This is episode number nine. Let us begin. I'll be putting the subtitles on the timer here. Sync it to whichever is your preference. And let's get started. All right, here's a countdown. Three, two, one, go. Golden week, okay. <laughs> No, probably she, he means everyone in the club. Or maybe not, let's see. Oh no, he, okay, he's including everyone. Hmm. Uh, wow. <laughs> yeah, everyone's going to go. <laughs> well, obviously. That's why... 
That's why he invited her when. There you go. When Rin is here. Up. Oh, there you go. A misunderstanding. <laughs> yeah. Oops, I do bag. Yeah. No? Oh, she's still reading Fable. Ah. Uh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> ah. All right, let's see. I want to make memories and buy. All right. Oh, they're finding clovers, foliage clovers. Uh -huh. What's she gonna make of it? Like a, like a book, uh, like you know, like the flower presses. <laughs> yeah, there you go. No, what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> Oh my god, no! Oh my god, no! <laughs> okay, that's a good answer! Nice! That's a good answer! <laughs> oh, there it is! Oh no! Oh no! Oh my god. <laughs> uh, well. Oh damn. <laughs> well, I guess in a way it's lucky. There you go. Hmm. 
<laughs> no. <laughs> well, <laughs> wow, progression. <laughs> oh, they're going to the uh, the Golden Week trip or whatever. You are running, what's going on? You're going to be sweaty. <laughs> wow, okay. Well, obviously you're going to be sweaty by the time you go there. Oh, they're also joining. Or oh, wait, no, I don't know. Oh no, 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 never mind. What? That's an interesting, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait, what happens if you get all the stamps? You get a, you get an extra suite or something? <laughs> yeah. They're like all suspicious. Ah, uh, technically not, but... <laughs> oh! <laughs> well... Yeah... <laughs> Oh. Yeah. oh my god, yo, look at them. Wow. They're not running, they're just walking fast. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Wait, what? Second run. Oh my god. She has almost finished it. There's like one stamp left. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Wait, they're going to arcade? Okay. Oh, this should be interesting. All right. Nice. 242. New record. Yeah. Like, what's the average? I wonder. <laughs> ah! I I don't. Oh my God! Yo, yo, what? What? <laughs> One <laughs> with her head. <laughs> oh, whack a mole. You know what? I think 
obviously the mandatory crane game is going to we're going to have that i'm guessing let's see <laughs> Oh, almost there. <laughs> wow, they're doing everything like, yeah, endurance related. Okay, this time it's a game. Ah, one of those games. Yeah. Okay. It's multiplayer. All right. Okay. Oh, the boss is coming. Yeah, there you go. All right. Yes, there you go. This is just the first, uh, first stage. Uh -huh. Warm up. What in the hell is this? Oh, air hockey. Okay. <laughs> you need reflexes here. Hmm. Okay. Oh no. Oh wait, it worked. Oh no, wait, it went it. Oh my god. Wow. That's a kind of impressive. <laughs> Wow. Uh, yeah, the positioning. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Mm. Yeah, and two hands. That's kind of impressive. Oh, is he falling down or something? Oh no, what? How did that happen? Okay. <laughs> Yes, there you go. Oh, wait. Oh, oh, wow. Okay, there you go. Yeah, zero four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's part of the game. <laughs> mm. Yep. Hmm. Okay. 
어, 브리크라. 헤헤. <웃음> What? 아, 네, 이거 아니에요. We are going to have one of these uh, crane events. Macho? What? Wait, is, are these chocolates? The chocolates? What in the... Uh, he, he'll probably try to get it because of, you know... Yeah... Yeah. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What did on? Oh boy. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All according to my plan. <laughs> uh, no filters, yeah. Mm. <laughs> oh, that, that, okay. Oh, the eyes are closed. Yeah. So, so is she. Oh, it's filing for the. F oh, wait, they have still one left. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> okay, dude. Oh, she got so many of them. <laughs> Wait, did she, did he get did he get it? Yeah, he get he got one. Wait, he he got one and that was the lucky one. That's kind of impressive. Round two. Wait, is this going to continue in the next episode? Oh, maybe. Who knows? All right, that is. Oh wait! Oh, there's still something left. All right. 
I was almost going to stop it. Oh no. Oh my god. Hey, is this like a confession or something? <laughs> hey, yeah, coincidence. <laughs> That's why he... Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know it pretty well. Oh yeah, she she remembered. Oh. Damn. He's like, wait a minute. What what does this mean? <laughs> See, <it did. laughs> wow. Oh boy. <laughs> well, there you go. Your luck. Okay, is that it? Yes. Wow. All right. We begin this episode with I <laughs> asking <laughs> Urushi out to hang out, you know. Uh, on the golden week and on the final day and uh, yeah and she's like oh like you know he's actually asking me out now and she's obviously she's she's like you know looking at rin rin is just sitting there and she's like wow in front of her and <laughs> obviously like like she should have realized that he's talking about the whole club like you know if if if, if you want to ask someone out like you know like alone personally like you know you should do that personally so obviously she did not realize that she thought like oh like you know he's asking me out <laughs> in front of Rin <laughs> but then there you go like you know we get to see like she's he's she says like yeah I'm fine I'm I'm, I'm okay with it I'm, I'm free on, on that day and uh, yeah and then and Rin is like oh wow that's nice you know, like, uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. And then she realizes, she's like, yeah, like, I should have realized that before. <laughs> and they also called Takeru and asked Takeru if she's, he's fine with it. And uh, Sakurako was there and, you know, like, Sakurako was like, okay, you, like, you know, like, you, you should, one day other than that, you know, uh, like, you know, uh, I want you to hang out with me. <laughs> and obviously... Um, here, uh, Takeru kind of got a little bit of a, I wouldn't say misunderstanding, but yeah, kind of like that. He thought like, oh, he, she's genuinely asking me to just hang out. But turns out she just wanted him, obviously she, I'm pretty sure she all wanted to also want to hang out with him. But there's another reason he, she wanted him to help her out to get like a, 
four leaf clover obviously because they bring good luck and also uh she can use it as like a bookmark you know like those presses that you make and uh, yeah now they start like you know looking for it and okay now you know what i've seen like you know like i'm pretty sure that like a lot of people like in a lot of anime we see like people trying to get like four leaf clovers and i really do not understand but like you know i really do not understand and didn't realize that how much it is rare to get a four leaf clover but yeah like after like you know like i, I think like it was a few years ago um because of like a school project or like you know, not like you know something like that you know we had to not project but like you know like something like that we were told to bring like three leaf clovers and like you know kind of make those presses things and uh, that is the time obviously three leaf clovers are pretty easy to get that is the time when i was also like okay you know what let me see if there is actually a four leaf clover is it really that difficult to get one you know and yeah it is it is quite difficult <laughs> i did not find any any one any and not even one four leaf clover I, I was able to get everything was like three leafed and i was like okay yeah it is pretty difficult you know like it is as difficult and as rare as they show in anime if you know it's, it's even more rare i feel like because in the end in anime i'm pretty sure like all the people who started to find tried to find that four leaf clover actually got one by the end of it but not me you know so i was like yeah it is pretty rare you know like before that i really do not understand or realize how much it is difficult to get a four leaf clover I, I just thought like oh they kind of they can show it in anime maybe it is not that rare but yeah like i realized and i got to know that it is quite difficult to get a four leaf clover <laughs> but anyways um so yeah he, he gets it he gets one of the four leaf clovers and he tries to rush to sakurako and just Rips and falls, and at that moment I thought, oh my God, is is his is the clover going to go away, like and fly away or something like that? But turns out no, nothing like that. He actually almost falls on top of her, <laughs> and she gets embarrassed for the first time, I guess, kind of, you know, like with an interaction with Takeru. Now, you know what is interesting? Up until now, I was genuinely, you kind know, of, confused as to if she realizes what, you know, the the little uh, sections and the little. Uh, teasing sections that she does and uh, like kind of laughs about like you know like something that Takeru does and he gets embarrassed and she kind of smiles and laughs about it I I thought I was genuinely like you know kind of curious as to whether she realizes what she's doing or she's genuinely clueless you know if she realizes that he likes her or is she really clueless yeah I actually I'm pretty sure everyone got the answer today she genuinely was clueless and uh, like this was something that i or like you know like obviously like you know we, we've seen in um takagi san where takagi knows like you know about how, how he likes uh, like you know nishikata and you know the whole situation she just teases him knowing that you know and uh, i was genuinely curious as to what's like you know, if that's the same case with this girl with sakurako or is she genuinely clueless about it turns out she genuinely is clueless she was clueless up until now up until today and uh, there you go and i'm pretty sure she still is clueless about his feelings she she knows about her feelings now but about his feelings she's still clueless and i'm pretty sure that is going to continue like that or who knows maybe not we'll see because you know like uh, usually sometimes in these type of shows where there's like two 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 separate like you know uh, stories going on um the side character or the side story usually most of the times they get together quick quicker than obviously the main cast so yeah that might actually happen before quite sooner than we expect <laughs> but yeah anyways um so yeah she she gets embarrassed and she's like you know kind of laughs she's like haha you fell down <laughs> and then they're like going back and she remembers the like you know like that situation and it's kind of getting embarrassed her cheeks are getting like a red and And she, she tries to say something to him, like, you know, and kind of like stops him. And she's like, oh, like, you know, Takeru kun, and kind of stops again and thinks about something, gets embarrassed again. And Takeru thought she was like, you know, because she's not used to, like, you know, these type of 
uh, situations like this, like you know, these situations where you need to, uh, uh, you know, like you know, this type of uh, what do you call them? Uh, situations with needs needs like physical endurance or something. Uh, that's why she thought he thought like, oh, he, she's probably tired or something. So he says like, oh, go home and take proper rest, you know. Oh boy. And yeah, that was the first part. Then the next part was um, obviously uh, 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 Aimu, uh, Irin, and um, Urushi and Takeru them actually meeting and like you know kind of uh, going on like a little uh, outing together. Not outing, but like a uh, have little fun on the day of the the final day of the Golden Week. And we see how Aimu and uh, Rin are trying to not race, I would say, but like you know, they're like walking quite quickly. At first, uh, Aimu was like, oh, I don't want to show up like an all sweaty and everything. I want to avoid that. But then Rin is like, oh, I'm, I'm going for ahead then and starts kind of walking quickly. And obviously, these two are too competitive. So <laughs> it's like, yeah, not on my watch. And he starts like you know, walking quickly as well. And yeah, obviously, like, you know, by the end of it, he did end up being sweaty. While all of this was happening, uh, Urushi is just waiting outside, kind of looking at her hair and everything doing her hair and they, she meets her friends and for a moment i was like oh wait she invited them as well but then they're like no we are here for like you know like the, the desert um what was it the desert uh just a second sweets endurance race or desert endurance race, whatever it's called so Wait, so you <laughs> collect 10 stamps to win your child. Oh, there you go. It's written there. I was like, what's going to happen if you get 10? Like, will you get like an extra thing or something? It's written. Collect 10 stamps to win your choice of free cake. Free cake. Okay. Uh, so you eat desert and get a stamp and eat desert again, get a stamp. That's kind of an interesting one, you know, like uh, basically, you know, obviously it's golden week. So a lot of people are going to be like, you know, ready to spend a lot of money. And like you know, get like some desserts and every stuff like that, like along with food, things to eat. So I'm pretty sure the 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 shop or like the like you know, um, what do you call it? Like the, the collection of uh, shops that decided to make this were like, all right, we're going to make like ten like you know, shops will have like this kind of a thing, but they'll have to take stamps and collect them. And in the end, if they are able to get ten of them, we'll give them a free cake. Which is interesting, you know, like that's like a good marketing strategy. <laughs> like obviously they're going to spend 10, like, you know, like money on 10 shops. Then only they'll get like a okay. cake. And it's like a win-win situation for both the shop and the people as well. Because people who really want to, like, you know, spend money on desserts and stuff, they'll get like a lot of it and they'll also get like an extra cake. While obviously the shopkeepers will, like, you know, the shops and the, the owners, they'll also be able to gain a lot of like you know we'll be able to do a lot of sales because of this kind of interest interesting uh strategy and uh, yeah and, and also another thing people who will be like oh like, you know you know like, the weight they'll who'll be concerned about their weight this also won't be that much affected by this because they're also walking and like you know going from one place to another so a lot of the calories will burn away but still i i guess like eating 10 desserts is kind of a big deal even though they're walking, it won't be able to probably burn off all the calories. But still, you know, it's, it's still, you know, like just better than just sitting and eating. They're just walking, you know, and then going somewhere, eating something, then walking again. But anyways, enough about that. <laughs> oh boy. And they're like, okay, uh, Urushi, why don't you join us? And Urushi's like, ah, no, not today. Obviously, uh, Maki, uh, Maki, was that her name? Maki or was it? Yeah, I think it was Maki. She, she's like, oh, I know what you're doing. You know, you're waiting for someone. You're going on a date with Takagi or something like that. And she, she's like, no, I'm not doing that. I thought it was, but it was not that. We're going as like a club. And she, re <laughs> excuse me, she realizes that she actually told her like, you know, feelings to them. And she realizes, and she's like, oh, crap. <laughs> and, you know, Mark is like, oh, that's quite, that's cute. And uh, and then that's when Ayumu and Rin comes in. And Rin also is like, oh, I also have one of these things, you know, like these uh, sweets endurance things. And uh, this is just her second run. And I forgot, like, you know, they kind of mentioned it, I think in the previous episode, 
she loves to eat i think that's what they said yeah she loves to eat so yeah makes sense she's already on her second run <laughs> oh boy and in the end like like maki was in the end like oh like i'll see you later and uh, tells uh, urushi like oh you look like you know really cute and like goes away <laughs> You don't have to worry about it, and um, or she was embarrassed, and I also say it's the same thing. She's even more embarrassed. All right. After that, they go to the arcade, and I was kind of like, it's kind of interesting they decided to go to the arcade for Golden Week, and uh, I guess yeah, you know, like instead of just like you know, like some other things, they decided to spend their day on in the arcade. And uh, there's so many things here. Like this is one thing is kind of like you know like I'm I'm very envious. I I have to say uh, about Japan is like their arcades. Like they have so many things over there. Uh, we also do have not have, but I I would I would love to say have, but it's currently not have, but had. You know we used to had have these things like you know, these arcade machines in a few of the shops and like you know like i think like almost like 10 years ago something was still there and nowadays i don't see any of them you know, and I'm, i remember like you know coming home from school and seeing a lot of like you know children playing there and uh, yeah like that was the thing and uh, like you know I, I i i remember playing like one or two times only and i was very like you know obviously i was like i was very like you know young at that time and I remember, like you know, them on uh, one of the arcades having like a little like a you know, racing game with a steering wheel, and it was my first time seeing something like that. I'm like, wow, this is really cool. <laughs> you know those steering wheel games that you have, and <laughs> and yeah, all those things. And I remember those. But obviously at that time, like you know, I was I used to play video games on my home, you know, like on my computer and stuff. But arcades, I've never really been there that much, or like you know, these type of things. So I'm kind of like I said, I'm kind of envious about like you know in Japan where they have like a like an arcade place where there's like so many of these things. It's not only those arcade machines, but it also has these other things like you know this uh, crane game, the the whack a mole, and what else was there? The air hockey thing and the the, the, the punching thing, uh, picture kurikura, all these things and like all at the same place. It's it's really cool, and uh, yeah. Anyways, um, enough about that. So, yeah, at first they start to do the punching thing, and obviously, like you know, like uh, I wonder what the average score is actually is because uh, Takeru scores like two forty two or something. Yeah, something like that. And uh, I, I, I'm guessing probably the average score will be like something like uh, how much? Like for their age, you know, for their age, it, it, maybe it'll be like two hundred or something. I'm pretty sure Takeru and uh, I were probably stronger than average because you know they do kendo and stuff. So yeah, I'm guessing it'll be like 200 or something. Who knows? And uh, yeah, and and then uh, Ushu was like, "Oh, I've never done this before," and she tries to do it, <laughs> trips and bashes her head. I'm so curious as to how the counter said one. Like she bashed her head pretty, like you know, quite quite with quite an impact. So I'm pretty sure it would be at least like you know 20 or 30 but it was one I'm like wow how how <laughs> how is that even possible but anyways and I was like oh your records are also cute <laughs> and then we would go to we go to the whack-a-mole and obviously um Urushi uh, again is kind of like you know not being able to do it properly and uh, then the basketball the, the cycling thing and the, the few other things as well, you know, like they're like having fun. And then they decide to go and do the, uh, I don't know what those are called, the the uh, uh, that that thing, uh, the the, the two, two airplane thing, you know, that one. Oh, I think these are called bullet rush, aren't they? You know what? Let me check. Yeah, I think that's what they're called. Let me check. Yeah, I think so. I'm not quite sure. I think these are called bullet rush. Maybe I'm not quite sure, but I think it's something like that. You know, like where there's like these type of things. And I, you know, I remember I used to play all these as well. Like you know, those handheld consoles, those things you used to have, and uh, <laughs> it was these were quite fun. 
and they were like playing that and he, obviously Urushi is very interested in that this because it had like the shogi thesis on it <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that was kind of interesting like like I really said it's kind of a niche uh, uh not sorry uh, like you know like a niche uh kind of a thing but obviously Urushi is very happy about this Urushi does start doing it and I'm also joins them and they they are able to kind of defeat the boss and in the end yeah they won and then we start with the air hockey <laughs> and uh, Ayumu and Urushi teams up while Takeru and um, Range teams up. <laughs> uh, at first, Urushi completely fails to stop it, and then the next try, she actually inserts the like you know the 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 thing. I what do you call it? I don't know what it's called. That thing, the disc thing, in, into her own goal, <laughs> and that's how like you know like she loses another points. And obviously, Aimu is like, all right, you know what? Let's do something. And he puts Aimu in front of her, him, and he goes behind her and takes two, two of those like you know, strikers, and is ready with it. And uh, <laughs> it's interesting how he was able to coordinate two hands at the same time. It's kind of difficult to do, you know, like coordinating two of your hands. Usually, you can coordinate one ear for your hand, but to coordinate two of your hands at the same time is kind of kind of difficult. But anyways, um, you know, like, and obviously with this, like, you know, the way he was doing it, Ushi's getting embarrassed because, you know, like, he, she's like in the middle and he's like on top of her almost. <laughs> so yeah, she's getting embarrassed and uh, like while playing, there's like one shot that Aimu, uh, Ushi kind of misses and almost like, you know, turns around and Aimu just falls, almost falls on top of her. <laughs> and oh boy, like, Ushi's embarrassed at that, obviously, like anyone would be embarrassed. <laughs> and then they lose, obviously, like, you know, by four, by four points they lose, nothing you can do about it. And, uh, yeah, after that, obviously, they'll have to buy them, like, you know, uh, soft drinks, because that was the bet. And, uh, Urshi says, like, oh, I, like, and I, I, because me, you, like, you know, you also have to do this. So, tell me anything, I'll do it for you, if you want. And, uh, Ayumu decides to get a purikura or like you know the 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 picture thing and while all of this was happening over there um Rin tries to get like koala's macho chocolate I think now this is one thing I'm was pretty sure was going to happen but I thought it was going to involve the main characters you know like Ayumu and Urshi because I feel like in like whenever there's an arcade episode the 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 claw game is a staple all the time any anime you get you as soon as you go to an target you you'll realize and you like you know you, you you you'll be sure that there will be an instance where we'll see like the claw game and usually what happens is by the end like you know like uh, this is one of those tropes you know by the end they'll try to get like a like a teddy bear or whatever those toys that are inside them and you know like uh one person will be very interested in them and the other person will try to get it for them you know and then and by the end they'll get it and give it gift it to them something like that that's like one of those like you know staple anime slice of life anime tropes whenever people go to the arcade and i thought that was also going to happen here uh technically it did happen but it was not not like you know like related to aimu or rishi they did not do it but um obviously um rin tried to get it for herself while uh, Takeru, after realize, uh, after listening that, oh, this also brings good luck or something, you know, the, the macho koala <laughs> that you'll get, he, he also tries to do it and uh, gets it by the end, you know, good thing. So, yes. All right. Now, after that, we see, we go back to Aimu and Urushi. And they're in, in, inside the picture booth chamber or the Purikura chamber. Uh, I, you know what? Like, I know they call it Purikura, but why do they call it Purikura? Let me check. Yeah, like what's the reasoning behind Purikura? Oh, Purikura is a shortened form of print club in Japanese. Ah, oh. Purikura. Oh, Puri means print and kura means kurabu or club 
interesting. I did not know that. I, I knew they were called Puri Kura, but I did not know why and like and the reason behind that name. So Puri is from Purint or Print and Kura is from Club or Kura Bu. So Puri Kura, okay. All right. Now they go inside the uh, picture booth and uh, decide to get some pictures. Uh, and uh, Aimu has never done it. So I'm just like, oh, what should we do? And she's like, don't you worry. I, I, I have been here before. So yeah, I'll show you. And she kind of makes like the pose and she realizes her pose was like, you know, like, obviously it's a mirror, I think. That's why you know, it was like on the wrong direction. You know, the whole uh, promoted shogi things that she does. <laughs> And then after that, there's like a filter given, which like kind of put makeup on them. And Urshin's like, what the hell is this? I don't want any filters. <laughs> and then they take a few other nice pictures. And Urshin uh, looks at him and Urshin's laughing. Urshin's like, what the hell? Like, you know, this is just, you know, you're like making the same face in every picture. <laughs> which is true. His picture, his face is just like that, you know, all the time. And uh, then they do the promoted show, uh, like, you know, pawn shine, uh, sign again. And I will see that she did it wrong again in the wrong direction. And she actually starts laughing here. And now nah, a picture, like, you know, suddenly happens. And uh, there you go. That, there we got the picture of I genuinely laughing and, like, you know, smiling, which is quite a rare moment, you know. And uh, yeah, like this is the thing, you know, like I feel like when people say that, oh, I'm going to take your picture, you kind of stiffen, you're like, oh my God, like unless and until you're too, like extremely photogenic and extremely, like, you know, what do you call it? Uh, like, you know, used to, used to taking pictures. Yeah, like it's crazy. Like you know, whenever someone tells me, oh, I'm going to take your picture. Oh my God, my picture comes out horrendous because always I'm going to, I get stiffened out. I'm like, oh my god, someone's still going to take my picture. I'm pretty sure everyone, every, like, you know, like I said, people who are not used to taking pictures, that happens to everyone. But if someone takes my picture without telling me, and I'm like, oh, the person got my picture, and then I see the picture, and I'm like, wow, this looks quite nice. Because I'm in my natural state, you know. <laughs> so that's the thing. So it's kind of similar to here as well. Like, uh, I'm always, always like, you know, like that, but this time he's genuinely smiling, and he did not know that the picture has been taken. So there you go. That's why the, the picture came out so natural and so nice. And yeah, in the end, Urshi says like, oh, this is a rare moment. And I got it. You know, I'm smiling. And obviously, after going back to Rin and Takeru, they realize that they have had their own fun. You know, <laughs> Rin just got like a bunch of them, like five or six of them. She just wants a candy, I'm pretty sure. While obviously, Takeru wanted the macho koala for the good luck. And he got it, which is kind of crazy, you know, like, it's crazy how, <laughs> like, you know, he, he tried to get it, to get, get more luck and, you know, get, give it to uh, Sakurako and to get that thing, that lucky thing, he used, I'm pretty sure he, he used so much luck, like, to get lucky, he had to be lucky, if you, if you realize what I'm trying to say, you know, he had to be lucky to get that lucky thing. If he was not lucky, he wouldn't be able to get that koala. He just, got, I think he got one of the candy boxes. And bam, that was it. And inside it, it had like a, the koala thing. And it's crazy, you know, like how lucky that was. Hmm. Or, or you know what, maybe not. I'm not quite sure, but maybe he also got like a bunch of them. And, uh, you know, like he, he probably saw which one had it. And gave the others to uh, Rin or something like that. That's why Rin has has so many of these chocolate boxes. Or oh no, maybe not. I can see these are sealed. No, no, uh, that that's the only one he got. Like he could have done that, obviously. Like you know, like like I'm I'm actually like surprised that he was so lucky to get. Like he just got one of those boxes, and that contained that. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy, this uh, is kind of off topic, but this reminds me of one thing. I remember, I don't know if you guys had, I'm pretty sure everyone had that, you know, when, when they were a child, that like, you know, like they used to put those type of toys, like uh, in, in, in my place, we used to have like, you know, like the chips we used to eat, uh, Cheetos and stuff, stuff like that, you know, uh, there's like two brands of chips, uh, which had like, uh, and at that time, Pokemon was huge. And I remember 
like you know like those you know, chips used to have like those pokemon like you know like some kind of like you know cards at first it was cards and then it kind of like you know kind of had like a different like you know pattern and used to change you know like day by day and used to have them and oh boy i remember i used to buy so many of them and obviously i was not allowed to eat all of them because of the amount i brought you know <laughs> just because of those like you know like those cars and i remember we like you know, if we had some duplicate or something we used to <laughs> exchange them with our friends and i remember actually tricking one of my friend to get like a bad card and like you know tricked him and took one of his good cards <laughs> I remember it was like something uh, I remember it was I think Gengar you know like the other yeah the other my one of my friends had a Gengar and I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm pretty sure that was quite rare and I got like a Meowth or something and I said something like <laughs> like I'm not saying Meowth is bad but I said I said something like oh you know what like this Meowth is quite good you know like this Meowth is a lot stronger than Gengar and uh, Meowth can talk Gengar cannot talk so yeah, it's that this one is better. So you give me Gengar, I'm going to give him me out, and that, <laughs> that's how I did it. And it was so crazy. I remember <laughs> I actually got Gengar like that. Oh my god, <laughs> memories. <laughs> Anyways, went on a tangent. But yeah, this whole thing kind of reminded me of that the macho thing inside the box. Um, we used to have them as well. It's kind of yeah. All right. Um. <laughs> And after that, they're like, all right, let's, let's go for the second round. And Urush is like, oh, we're going to continue? <laughs> oh, boy. And then after the uh, uh, like, you know, end credit scenes, we see uh, Takeru... Uh, oh, we see uh, someone confessing to like, you know, like, uh, uh, Sakurako. And then we see Takeru and Sakurako there sitting. And Takeru gives her the, the macho thing. And she's kind of thinking about something, and uh, which we realize after that when she says like, "Oh, I've been confessed to," and uh, like this is where all the things come out. You know, we actually realize that Sakurako really was clueless up until now. She was not genuinely like you know, deliberately teasing him. She genuinely did not know about his feelings. Like I said this multiple times in multiple uh, episodes previously, where I was like, "Does she is she genuinely clueless, or is she actually teasing him?" But there you go, I have my answer. She was genuinely clueless. And <laughs> she says like, oh, someone confessed to me. And then she says, like, I don't understand what love is and what it is. So she was kind of thinking like, yeah, what is that? Like, you know, he, he says that he likes me, but I don't understand what like is. So he was kind of thinking about it. While listening to that, Sakura just almost spilled his like, you know, milk or whatever he was drinking. And um, he asked Takeru like, oh, what is love? And uh, I think, he says something like, how should I know? And then he ends up giving her like a whole explanation. <laughs> At first he says, how should I know? And then ends up giving her like a whole explanation, like a, like a, like a five, like, you know, like two minutes whole, like, you know, descriptive answer of her question. And I'm like, yeah, you know it pretty well. <laughs> oh yeah. And he, he gives her the answer and he's like, yeah, like, you know, you want to be with them, want to do stuff for them. You want like you know always think about them stuff like that and you're like you know you 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 your heart beats faster and stuff like that he says and that final word that he said like your heart beats faster kind of got to her and she realized that oh that also happened to me when you know that i actually almost fall on top of me and she realized and she was like oh, okay so that is like or love and she says like all right i'm going to turn him down and uh, then he she kind of you know tells him that oh uh, thank you thank you Takeru that you taught me about liking someone this is an interesting line or statement where this can be interpreted in two ways Takeru here interpreted it uh, in this way he interpreted it like Takeru told him her about what like is and love is so he thought that she's thanking him about that but I'm pretty sure Sakurako said this in a different way in a different meaning she said that that you taught me about liking someone is probably the fact that she was embarrassed and she like you know like like you know, her heart beat it fast when she, he was on top of her almost and that's what she's referring to she's referring that oh you taught me about liking someone this someone is him so i'm i think at least she probably realized that she likes that kid here and that's what sh she said here but obviously Takiru did not realize that. Takiru thought that she's literally meaning that, oh, thank you for telling me 
uh, the meaning of liking someone, but she she did not mean it literally. You know, she she's actually talking about that experience, and I'm pretty sure she won't mention this about this. You know, and it'll still be like you know like no one will know, like you know Takuru will at least not know. But I'm pretty sure after this, from here this point onwards, we'll see more of Sakura who genuinely getting embarrassed because she actually knows and realizes now that yeah she likes him or something like that because as soon as like you know like she says that we see like you know we see what happens like he eats she's eating that thing <laughs> and uh, that that koala thing and when he asks like oh you're looking kind of flushed she kind of puts the the, the remaining piece into his mouth <laughs> and because she's embarrassed and there you go so yeah progression as you as we can see and there you go and that's it that was my reaction to uh when will anime make his move uh episode number nine if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to press the like button subscribe if you're new to the channel if you haven't subscribed comment down below anything you want to say anything you want to let me know and i'll check them out that is it guys thank you for watching and i'll see you guys next week with another episode of uh when will anime make his move until then goodbye and have a nice day